and welcome to, ooh, it's the first proper review of this year. Hmm, who would have thought? We've done quite a lot of archive material and last week there was a Phono Amplifier Buyer's Guide. I'll put links to all those on the top there if you want to have another look. But we're looking at the Goldring Ethos in this particular review and this one is priced at £895. This is a moving coil cartridge and it's Goldring's top of the range model. And before we go any further, before we look at the closer look section, which we'll get to just in a second, I find it interesting that Goldring positions this cartridge as its top of the range model. It says a lot about the company and where it sees itself in terms of the end user. For some companies, when they reveal their best of the best, you tend to expect a monetary figure attached to it that's so high it needs oxygen to perform. Something in the 4K area, perhaps? 7K? Higher? I recently tested the cartridge, currently in development and only in the prototype stage at the moment, that uses a solid one-piece diamond cantilever. Even the bendy bit holding the stylus tip at the bottom is part of that single piece, and that cartridge costs in excess of £10,000. Now let me remind you, Goldring's top-of-the-range model here retails at £800. And 95 pounds. We haven't broken even through that 1,000 pound barrier here. This company targets the mass market, that's for sure, the busy budget and mid range hi fi sectors. And by golly, it's done and continues to do a great job. I have a couple of gold ring designs in my review section on my site, and I'll put a link up to the 1042, which I've reviewed in this channel on the top of the screen there. And it's packed to the gills with plaudits, and deservedly so, I might add. And Goldring occupies a special niche in the cartridge market, but with 895, it's starting to play with the big boys. It's moving out of its comfort zone. It's starting to hit some serious competition. When Goldring looks over its shoulder, it's not just seeing Autophon and Audio-Technica anymore. There's a whole host of rather more exotic brands in its vicinity now. So let's look in a bit more detail at the Goldring Ethos, and let's just get underneath its skin before we get to the sound quality tests. In fact, let's take a closer look. Welcome to the closer look section for the Goldring Ethos moving coil. And as you can see here, I've mounted my review sample on my reference turntable, in this case the Avid Acutus with an external power supply. Goldring makes a point of highlighting the stylus profile of the new Ethos. The stylus is a line contact model, but Goldring refers to it as a vital design in its press materials. This brand name betrays the involvement of the Japanese industrial dual outfit Ogora. I hope I pronounced that correctly. A specialist in the field of diamonds. A company that has been in business since 1947, in fact. You could say that this stylus tip is rather refined. The tip itself is held by an alloy cantilever, but that's a very general name. So I asked Goldring what the alloy actually meant in practical terms, and it replied, and I quote, the Ethos uses A2017, which is an aerospace aluminium alloy with a comparable hardness to steel, but which is obviously much lighter. It is this combination of stiffness and low mass which makes it ideal for use in a record player cartridge. The cantilever is also a hollow tube, which removes even more mass and yet retains the stiffness. Now, before we look at the stylus itself in all its glory, let's take the stylus guard off and let's take a quick look at it on its own. It has an intriguing shape, as you can see here, and it has a sort of fin, which you can just see on the right-hand side. It can be used as a sort of handle to pull the guard away from the rest of the cartridge. 
Inside the aluminium chassis is a hand-built GOL1 moving coil generator. According to the company, it, and I quote, takes advantage of a lower coil inductance and reduced effective mass when compared to traditional moving magnet types. The neodymium magnet sits alongside a new damper pad that uses a bespoke butyl rubber compound to keep the system damped. The coils themselves are wound around a cross-shaped armature of Swedish iron. Goldring likes Swedish iron, apparently. Why? Well, again, I quote, the reduced unsprung mass improves the ability of the stylus to track the groove wall and minimize cross-torque, improving the stereo image. So, that's why. The cartridge itself has 7.7 .7 grams of mass and a tracking force of a relatively light 1.75 grams. So, how does this cartridge sound? Well, let's zip over to the sound tests and we will see. And welcome back to the sound tests for the Goldring Ethos moving coil cartridge. And for these sound tests, I looked at two contrasting pieces of music. First off, well, I'm a sucker for vocal harmonies. So I began with the intriguing 1975 album from the King Singers. Keep on changing from EMI combines vocal harmony with soft rock and a range of interesting covers, including my track of choice here, one called Pantomime, penned, conducted and arranged by one Simon Park, who some of you will know from his best-selling creation, the TV theme to the detective series Van der Volk. Now, apart from the vocal harmonies, you're looking at acoustic guitar, bass guitar, we're looking at bouncy, organic, slow, resonant drums. We're looking at a host of secondary percussion, such as bells, conga, possibly there's a tambour in there, and a backing orchestra. It's a pretty complex presentation overall. So how to describe my first impression from the ethos? Civilized, I reckon. In fact, under £1,000, the ethos has to be the most civilized cartridge I've ever heard. It reminds me of the sort of approach to sound that I would expect from something like the Atsuro Yurushi, priced at over £4,000. And what I mean by that is the ethos allows you to come to it. It doesn't hit you over the head with headline features. Sometimes cartridges like to brag, they like to boast. Check out this bass, it says, bam, bash on the head. Hear the detail from this mid-range, slap, right across the chops. But the ethos doesn't do anything like that. It's polite, it's well-mannered, it's cultured. It coughs delicately and jeeves like suggests. Would it interest her to address the symbols on the left channel? And then it may add, oh, and tea is served. Should I serve the cream cakes now? You see, Goldring's ethos doesn't pretend that it's sitting in the middle of an AV system, pushing out all those special effects from the first 15 minutes of Saving Private Ryan. The ethos would rather arrange the detail across the soundstage and prepare subtle gestures, offering the detail to you when you're ready to hear it, if you want to, if you have the time. It does this firstly by lowering the inherent noise that surrounds its presentation. You may find yourself even upping the gain a few notches to reach your familiar volume. Doing this, you will pull in newly heard information. Those mids are oh so relaxed. In fact, I would recommend experimenting with the loading on this one. Ignore the specs. Set it by ear. Spend a day doing this. Don't rush it. Keep the sound relaxed with enough information to delight the ear and you'll have a gem as a source component. During the tests, vocals were easy on the ear and very relaxed indeed, with extended reverb tails full of extra space and air. A swathe of subtle mid-range detail flooded into this newly offered space. Strings were very smooth indeed and yet retained 
a good level of focus while emphasizing that yes you are listening to the real things here these are not synths just pretending so what i'm saying here is that the tonal realism of the ethos was very high indeed don't infer that this smooth offering indicates some sort of soft approach from the ethos far from it there is a definite precision and focus to each instrument under this cartridge's gaze so bass guitar was lean yet punchy it was never bloated or boomy secondary percussion was detailed yet transparent while the vocal harmonic combination was full of tonal variation i then moved on to a rather contrasting piece of music from a duo called root masters now this in fact is a combination of a lady named nina walsh and alex patterson the very same guy who is the core of the orb the ambient dub outfit i played the release push once and the track elephant puddle now the sub bass on this track could have swamped the entire soundstage but never did it maintained a space between it and the vocals samples and the rest the effect was to enlarge the soundstage giving it both physical height and depth the sometimes aggressive sonics on this particular track never tipped over into brightness at any time but it kept itself in check the ethos calmly telling you that yes the vocal is harsh and provocative just so you know the initial beats on the track book of hours auto lump were effectively tracked even though the original beats themselves were fairly soft with rounded edges the ethos was attentive in retrieving the details here though the later harder bass rhythms provided a complementary foot tapping sequence that drove this instrumental forward at a pace and during all of this time all of the frequencies maintained the discipline and stayed where they should they never encroached where they shouldn't be so they never veiled any detail so space was retained between each giving the music an airy presentation so when this ambient techno piece pushed into harder higher tempo techno beats the bass never dominated they were significant yes and they sat center stage that's true but again they never swamped the adjacent frequencies they kept to the position that was assigned to them and they did their job in that position they never leached to the frequencies next door hence the ethos was able to maintain clarity while offering plenty of musical emotion so what do i think of the goldring ethos moving coil cartridge the company's top of the range design well reviewing the goldring ethos cartridge is exactly like reading the first chapter of the three volume set of lord of the rings and then being asked to review the entire book in toto i get the feeling that this cartridge needs oh i don't know a year to get to know rather it is an ideal tool to allow you to reacquaint yourself with your record collection and spend a full year to fully grasp just what this cartridge can do i also feel that you can spend time with this cartridge micro tweaking it to get the very best out of it when you buy a gold ring ethos you're given a promise a promise that your hi-fi life will improve slowly and steadily over time the ethos is for the long haul yes you can rejoice right now in the oral gains that you will hear but then you can prepare yourself for new joys to come as a host of information is fed to you over a long period the ethos it's the gentleman's gentleman of cartridges and that's it for me thank you very much for staying to the end of this video i do appreciate all your support your likes and subscribes and if you haven't done that please click on the available buttons that helps this channel to grow also check out the description i've put some links down there to my website which has hundreds of reviews and features and news and interviews and all kinds of stuff most of which are not on this channel so check that out i'm also all over social media there's a host of links down there too and i run my own facebook group which is edging towards 8,000 users as i speak and you're welcome to join 
you'll be safe there, you won't be hassled, no trolls are allowed, I make sure of that. And there's a host of debates, all very civilised, all very polite, and there's lots of help that is on offer if you need it. Now I'll be back with another video next week, I hope you can join me, I'd love to have your company then. Until that time, bye bye for now.